Being a home brewer, you can pretty much brew whatever you want. I've said this a few different times, a few different ways, but really when it comes down to it, if you want a flavor, you can just go get it. If you want a dark, roasty beer, you can make one. If you want a super light, really, really crisp, refreshing, hoppy beer, you can make that happen. Sometimes you want both. What's up everybody, Just Brewing here. Welcome back to the home brewery for another grain to glass video. I finally got around to brewing my first black IPA after many, many, many months of having my first black IPA. I did brew a tropical stout. I did that under pressure in a corny keg. Um, that was the first step I took into this kind of space, whether it's you know a hoppy stout or a roasty IPA. It was the first beer that I brewed like that, and um, it made me want to do it. Um, with the cold weather outside, roasty beers are kind of what I'm looking for. It's what's on the menu. And I have a chocolate porter here, and I didn't want to step on that with some sort of stout. So I kind of went a little bit of a different route. The Black IPA is not new and it is an official style. Um, and that's really, really nice to see that uh, just because it's not traditional doesn't mean it's not official. So I really like this style and I've only ever had it one other time, but now it's time to change that. I'm gonna brew this beer on my claw hammer supply system. This would be the second beer that I've brewed on the system and I'm still getting familiar with it, but the system's been working out great. Um, I've actually been exceeding some of my numbers as of late, so I'm gonna need to readjust it as I continue to use it, as I continue to dial it in. But the system's been great and I can't wait to continue using it in the future. If this is the kind of content that you like, make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But other than that, let's go ahead and get right into brew day. For the grain bill on our black IPA, We've got Maris Otter as our base malt. This will give us a bit of breadiness and nuttiness that will help balance out some of the bitterness and roastiness that the pale chocolate malt is gonna give us. Midnight Wheat is gonna give us all of our color here. It's gonna be very, very dark, all thanks to Midnight Wheat. Crystal 80 and Carafoam are gonna give us just a little bit of sweetness as well. Again, hopefully to kind of counteract what pale chocolate malt is gonna give us. We get that into our strike water and we're going to mash for one hour at 149 degrees Fahrenheit. You can mash a bit lower, I would recommend maybe mashing a bit lower just so that it can dry out a little bit more. Uh, 149 is a bit high for, uh, for this style of beer. I add in a secondary thermometer and get my pump ready for some mash circulation. At the end of our one hour mash, we yank the grains, I grab one hook and set it inside to give it the old Martin Keen lean. We get this to a boil and follow the on-screen hop schedule. All of the hops I chose are going to have some citrus notes, while Summit is also going to give us some herbal notes, Cascade some floral notes, Azaka and Citra both are going to be giving us some sweet fruit as well as the citrus notes that they're gonna offer. So very fruity, very hoppy beer, and I cannot wait to see how this hop combination turns out. At the end of our whirlpool, we continue chilling and we get it into a sanitized fermenter and make sure to aerate on the way in so that the yeast has a bit of oxygen to feed off of while it starts working. I'm gonna ferment this in my garage and my plan is to keep it above 90 degrees. So I'm also gonna be preparing my fermentation jacket as well as a heating pad to help with temperature control. For yeast, we're gonna be fermenting with Omega's Lutra Kvike. This is the dry strain. I've used this a couple times now and I am an absolute fan. I think it might be my go-to for these types of beers. About a week or so into fermentation, I dry hop with an ounce of Azaka and an ounce of Citra. This is really going to help drive home the citrus and sweet fruit notes that I'm expecting out of this beer. I let it sit in the fermenter for about another week before it was time to keg, carb, and get it ready for the tasting. And here it is in a glass, the Black IPA. At first glance, you would have no idea this is an IPA. It's very, very dark. On the nose, you get a little bit of roastiness, some fruit character. I can't quite put my nose on it, but there is just really all I can describe is fruit. It's fruity. And the taste, I mean, it is a bit bitter and quite roasty, um, uh, almost more roasty than I would prefer. Uh, it's not too bitter, uh, but more bitter than I thought it was gonna be. 
The hop character does come through, and again, I can't exactly pinpoint each individual flavor. I mean, there's citrus and maybe something like grapefruit or something. I don't really know. It's really, it's really, really hard to tell considering how much the roast is covering some of the hop character. Um, if I would, next time I do this, I'm probably gonna find a way to make sure that's flipped where the hop character is pronounced first, and then you get the roastiness. Um, because right now it's 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 really roasty. It's a good beer, but it's more roasty than I thought uh, than I thought it was gonna turn out to be. That extra bitterness, I'm not really sure where that's coming from, if it's the roastiness or if it's from, you know, my bittering addition or from my dry hop. My guess is that it's from my dry hop, mostly because um, I did not dry hop this oxygen free like I can. Um, I was in, in a bit of a rush at the time, so I just dry hopped, you know, I opened it, tossed the, the hops in. There was a magnet inside, but mostly so that I could guarantee the hop bag was in the middle of the wort, or at least in the middle of the bucket, so that uh, everything was covered. If you just sprinkle it on top, that kind of works because eventually it will uh, fall down. But in a bag, it's very likely gonna float. So I used a magnet inside the bag and a magnet outside the fermenter and just made sure that the bag itself was at the middle um, of the bucket while it was fermenting. So that part went well, but it just sat on those hops for far too long. Um, I guess I got a little bit lazy when it came to actually getting it kegged. Um, I ended up kegging all three beers at the same time, the Imperial IPA, Chocolate Porter, and the Black IPA. I kegged them all at the same time, despite brewing them weeks apart, or at least the Imperial IPA a week or two before. Um, so. I got a bit lazy when it came down to it, so that's probably where it came from. It sat on the hops for maybe a week, and that's a little bit longer than I would hope. Usually you can see that kind of stuff for a couple days, you know, you can take the bag out, and that's probably what I could have done if it wasn't gonna keg it, but I didn't, I got lazy, and this is kind of the result. Um, the reason I think it's the hot dry hops is because I essentially did the same thing with the Imperial IPA. That's got some hop burn, a little bit of, um, yeah, hop heat behind it, and same thing. I dry hopped with the bags and, the, and the, the magnet, but this time the bag fell back into the beer when I was sliding it up because the, the hops had absorbed so much of the beer. I've used Lutra before a number of times, and this is probably the longest that it's taken for whatever reason. Um, I did have it in the fermentation jacket on top of the heater for, you know, about two and a half weeks. That's how long it took to ferment this out. And um, I would expect it to be done in like a week or so, usually. Um, but this one, it took, it took a little bit longer, and I'm not sure why. Um, fermentation was not as vigorous um, as Lutra can be. Um, and this time around, um, I'm not, and I'm not sure specifically what it was, but I think about a week in when I typically would have been, when it would have been done, I would have probably been on day two or three of the dry hop. Um, it was not where I wanted it to be as far as fermentation. I was hoping that it could be like two thirds of the way done when I was dry hopping. But when I wanted to dry hop, it just wasn't there yet. It wasn't at that two thirds mark. I could have dry hopped still and you know gone with it, but I wanted it to be a little bit further along. Um, and I mean, that, that part worked out great, but I think that's probably where I dropped the ball on uh, getting the hops out of there. Probably could have gotten the hops out and kegged it sooner if the fermentation didn't drag so long. Um, one way or another, the beer turned out great. I'm not really complaining, but I'm trying to figure out where where kind of went wrong and why why it's so why it's so bitter. All in all, I'm happy with my first black IPA, but I cannot wait for my second because it's going to be much much better. Thanks for viewing. Just brewing.